Soccer Doc with the Soul. I'm Adam Deal. like to thank Body Armor, official hydration of Soul Soccer, proud supporters. Uh, now joining me again, it's Larry Espinosa, general manager of the Soul. We've had some fun. We've went over some highlights. We've talked about the state of U.S. soccer. We've talked about where the Soul is at right now. Uh, now it's a little bit of, of what the Soul give back to the community. I mean, it's a lot. You guys appreciate New Mexico soccer, you New Mexico guys, so talk about it a little bit. Yeah, you know, when we, when we formulated the team, the only way we figured we could do this right is to continually give back. Um, we, we have something that we, we say throughout, um, throughout the years. We've said the difference between who we are and who we want to be is what we do. Um, so every game is dedicated to a nonprofit, and uh, we try to go to children's hospitals, um, get out to schools for some of their uh, fiesta days, and uh, really try to be involved uh, to get people to understand, A, who we are, and for people to realize that this is just not, it's just not about the game. This is about developing a culture, developing a community where people can come in and say, hey, wow, those guys are doing cool things. And, you know, a lot of these kids that go through the club ranks, I think they get to experience something really cool with the soul, because we talked about it earlier. I mean, it's, th this is players that are transitioning from college, hopefully into the pro ranks. So right. it's quality soccer that they get to be a part of as well. Absolutely. Um, it gives everybody that little taste of, wow, those guys were human. You know? I think that's too often what happens with, with athletes is they are unapproachable or they seem unapproachable. So um, getting them to be able to, the, the kids to be able to react and, and, and interact with, with players is, is very cool. Um, it helps the players and it gives uh, the kids something to shoot for. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about club soccer here with Eduardo Garcia. Uh, he's with Chivas, the Chivas club locally, the youth club. Uh, we'll get more into that. But uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about something that's kind of fun. Soul sightings is something you guys started. And this is where, where someone cool, who's cool, or, or some place that's unique where you see somebody with a soul scarf or a, you know, a soul jersey on or something soul representative. Uh, there's been a lot of them. There's been some cool places some where people have been. Very cool. Um, I wasn't a believer when we started out with the idea of the scarf. You know, Ron's from England, so he comes to all me about with, the you right. Know, he comes to me with this idea: team. Hey, we need we need to we need to develop a scarf. I said a scarf, Ron. We play in summer; it's hot. There's no way. And I gave in. I said, "All right," and um, been the best decision uh, that we have made. We're probably about the only decision that I've made wrong. It was trying to say no, but no, uh, scarf. yeah. Um, and are you trying to say that it's the only decision that Ron Patel has made right? Maybe. Okay. No, because he, he allowed me to join. Here so. it is. <laughs> that's, that's our mayor, Barry, Yeah. holding it up. That's uh, also Kevin Johnson, the uh, mayor of Sacramento, former NBA player. Um, this is a really cool uh, South by Southwest. It's called Living Cities, where Sacramento and... Uh, U.S. were one, and so they had a our uh, military cool appreciating yeah. some New Mexico and the Albuquerque soul. Yeah, we we got that one from an undisclosed location in Afghanistan. So it always makes you uh, realize that uh, we're always protecting, and uh, they they were representing. This one is is from Carolina and the Panthers. This is actually in the Seattle Panthers divisional NFC uh, playoff game that wasn't too long ago. Yeah, yeah, we get them from all over and in different events. We've had them from. Uh, Major League Baseball. And, That's uh, my old co-host, Charles Ashley. That is. Yeah. What's Charles Ashley doing with a scarf? He doesn't know anything about soccer. What's he doing with a scarf? He, he reps the city, He though. reps the city. He does. Yeah. He absolutely does. Charles Ashley. Promise me we're not going to have him on the show, Ron. He's in the background. All right. Uh, the, at the beach? I mean, this is everywhere. Um, this, is, this is fun. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of where that one was from. Come on. Um, you know them all, right? I think that one was actually from... Uh, Australia, if I remember correctly. Um, we've been very fortunate to have them uh, from different places around the world. And it all started out with uh, an idea from the Travelocity Gnome, uh, where people would take a picture with that gnome from wherever we, they traveled. We threw it out and said, hey, when you travel, take a picture. Someone bought the scarf uh, at our scarf release party 12 hours later at the Red Eye to New York. 
first soul sighting happened. And we've seen them all over. I mean, we've seen them at Champions League games. We've seen them at, at crazy places. I mean, Ron just went to England and was able to do that. Uh, but if you've got a soul scarf or you need a soul scarf, soul scarf get it. Uh, give us a, a picture. Send it to Twitter at ABQ Soul. Um, it's pretty fun. There's a lot of pictures up. You can go to the Twitter of Souls and check out some of all the pictures that are out there. It's some fun stuff. Yeah. All right, uh, now welcoming on, as promised, Eduardo Garcia. We appreciate you joining us, director of the Chivas Youth Club. Uh, how you doing, man? Good. Thank you for the invitation. Very good. good. It's a lot of fun. Um, this is a lot of fun. Well, this is something that Albuquerque needs, right? The Seoul Soccer PDL League here. It's important, don't you think? Yes, I think uh, that's, that's true. We need, like, a professional team here. And when we talk, we're talking about club teams, and, and Chivas, obviously, very important here in Albuquerque. Talk about your club and the things that are going on. Chivas is, uh, well, it's Guadalajara soccer. Chivas is the nickname. Right. All right, and um, it's a small club, but little by little it's growing up. We have probably now in four years, four years old, the club, and now we have the top um, probably like three number one state ranking teams you know like that's absolutely huge and, and 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 you can help on this larry is is we were talking about it kind of hit on it a little bit earlier but i thought we'd get more into it right here is youth soccer is getting better and better because of clubs and the way the upbringing is look when i was growing up youth soccer there was just about three or four clubs and they were we called them the rich clubs because it was it was the the clubs that you had to have the big time dollars to get to but not necessarily the best players I think things are kind of changing a little bit it is they're, they're trying to uh, w w there's a lot of work being done to even the landscape and that's one of the cool things that uh, guys like Eduardo does you know he gets down into um, the more of the less fortunate and um, yeah, that's not even necessarily true because he does have some players that you know are very fortunate but they get them all together and they teach them very strong fundamentals and um, it's it's paying off for him. Uh, he's got a, a great group of uh, coaching staff that get in it and he, he works well between the 6th and the 12th, the 14 year age Six group. He, 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 he really recruits well and, and puts them all together out there. Well. I've noticed the development of young kids. My son is, is six years old and he plays soccer and just from when I was six years old we just stepped on the field and they taught us you know the rules of the game and that's how you play. That's it. It's completely different nowadays. I mean yeah. it's it's all about touches, touches, touches and learning how to play with your feet and getting better. Talk about that at work. Yeah well it's hard. You know, it's hard for nobody wants to teach the little kids and we have the special coaches that they really like to work with that kind of the kids, you know, like the youth kids, like from six to ten, maybe that's the hard part, you know. They but they want, they really want to learn. So a lot of the co we had like probably three or four coaches that they they had the capacity to teach him how to play and and not like just teach him soccer, you know, teach him different kind of stuff, you know, like do that kind. With, with at that age, you just gotta try like. Training soccer, but you gotta bring something else to to development. And I think a lot of this is coming not only from from you know successful North American uh, countries like Mexico, youth wise, but even Europe. I mean, I think a lot of uh, the way we're developing our kids, a lot of touches. I mean, for example, I mean at six years old, these kids are doing step overs and stuff. Things that mm. you know, I, when I was in youth, we didn't learn until we were a little bit older. You know, ten, eleven years old. So so things are happening quicker here with the ball at least yeah you know it's funny um when i was i had done in my early days some some work with u.s soccer and i met a gentleman by the name of timo lukuski uh who was polish and he he taught me a lot An older gentleman and he he had something to say he said you know what teach your kids how to learn how to dribble and how to handle the ball because as they get older you can teach an older child how to pass you can't teach them how to dribble and as you start to see that development, it's really starting to change the landscape of soccer here in the United States. Well, what do you think as far as our kids growing up? Okay, so say they're in that middle school stage into high school. Uh, what's the big difference of, of getting these kids ready for the next level? That's the hard part. That's the hard. I'm from, let's say from 13 to 16. Yeah. There is a, that's a really hard, you know, a lot of the kids, they want to play soccer, but they're not 
like a hundred percent into soccer. You know, they try and do something else. They don't. It's hard to bring it to practice. You know, like around fourteen, sixteen years old. Right. Now they drive by themselves, so you know they don't show up to practice. So it's hard. It's hard. But um, you know, we our like our club is trying really effort because we we have a very good program from the six years old to like twelve, but from thirteen and up. That's when we had the problem, the problems. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's a huge amount of growth that takes place at that age too. So people, kids are trying to figure out what their bodies are and where they're where they're going, and it just it makes it difficult for those years. So a conversation we'll surely have uh, for episodes to come. Um, U.S. soccer, I think it's pivotal around that edge where U.S. soccer goes and some of the changes it makes if U.S. soccer is going to start competing at the level that we wish for it to compete. I really appreciate your time. Eduardo Garcia, uh, of course, Larry Espinosa. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure we'll see you a lot more. Uh, thank you to Ron Patel uh, coming on with Solar Power. Uh, Megan Bodenheimer, thank you. And also to Mike Edwards. That's going to do it for the first show. This was the very first episode. Uh, there'll be more to come, I promise you. That's it. Join us next time. It's Soccer Talk with the Soul. With the Soul.